You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Radio Public, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 4th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Banquet Hall Buffet of Impeachable Offenses, where there's never a clean plate available, it's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Hey, Blue Gal. I mean, the table How are you? groaning under the feast of corruption and deception <laughs> and treason. And, you know, uh, I'm probably stealing, stealing a line from Harlan Ellison. The prosecutor's arms have grown weary carrying evidence up to the bench. I'm tired. I'm tired. I pile up enough evidence to block the sun out, you know? It's time for the trial to start because the evidence, this is open and shut. If there were ever a fucking open and shut case, Mm -hmm. it's an open Mm -hmm. and shut case. Of course, it, Mm -hmm. it it won't be because Republicans are, by their nature, terrible, terrible people. But yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah, it's just, it's just open confession. Uh. I I like the term that my Crooks and Liars colleagues are using, and I'm not quite sure where they got it, but mm-hmm. calling it um, the helicopter <laughs> <laughs> conferences, press conferences. Yeah, so this is uh, this is why we need that, to bring back Sam Donaldson because right, hello. Yeah, only Sam <laughs> could over, outshout Reagan's helicopter. Yeah, and uh, get yeah. a question past the roar of those wings, those those chopper blades, and uh, well, I want I want to start today by addressing. Um, one of my favorite types of donations that we get here at the podcast. Yes. Um, I love it when we get a $5 donation from someone who's never sent anything to us before. Mm -hmm. And they put the word therapy in the memo line of the check, (laughs) because this is therapy for me too, to be able to talk to all of you, to hear from you, to have this kind of community where we help each other sort of get through these insane days. I have a bracelet from our friends at Foxwise Jewelry who did resist bracelets for us a couple of Christmases ago. And my bracelet says, not today, Satan, <laughs> uh, which I think is something I really need this week. Uh, and I just wanted to pass that along to everybody that yeah. this uh, you can you can either take it from the standpoint, if you want a, a Bible bitch situation, you can take it from Revelation 1212 where the bible says woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time mhm uh but the other quote that i like is from macbeth and i actually on our notes entitled this episode stupid macbeth <laughs> because yeah well uh, and i love macbeth i mean it's yeah right But uh, Macbeth is sitting there being depressed about life and says, uh, life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Mm -hmm. And so my mantra for this coming week and this coming however long it takes to watch the self-destruction of this asshole Mm-hmm. Uh, is fuck that noise? But not and, today, but Macbeth. So yeah, <laughs> no, just, just you know, he he's now calling for you know an impeachment vote and a trial so that he can call Hillary Clinton to the stand. Oh please! And I please, keep going. Please promise. <laughs> can just, she testify for eleven hours, please? Because she's just good at that. <laughs> don't throw her in that briar patch, man. Whatever you do, <laughs> do not throw her in that briar patch. Do not do it. No. no, he's insane. Yeah, he and is. And his well, followers, we, he and Rudy Giuliani cooked all of this up out of mm-hmm. out of 4chan comment threads. Yeah. And then back, had enough power and enough money and enough leeway to act on it. This is the guy who shot the floor in the pizza parlor. Right. This is the same. It's the same mentality. This is the guy it's the who same thought mentality. Yeah. That, that Barack Obama wasn't born here. Right. And has and his detectives were uncovering amazing things. Amazing things. <laughs> and 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 it's just it's one rolling catastrophe covered up by one ever larger 
conspiracy blob, uh, you know, iterated a million times. And mm -hmm. it is terribly important, I think, for us all to understand. And I do think there are people on social media and out there in the, in the liberal blogosphere and on Twitter and so forth, who are sort of finally, finally getting it through their heads that you are never going to be able to reason with these people. Right. There's 30 or 40 million of them and they're just gone. They're just never coming back. Um, they have hooked their worldview to this lunatic and they are never coming back. They're ne they don't, they don't want to talk to you. They don't speak the same language that you do. They don't have the same reality base you do. And because of that, because it is the natural liberal impulse to want to reason with people and discuss and find common ground. And they just keep telling you over and over again, fuck you. I'm never going to do that. Um, because, and I'm, I'm working on a post on this. I haven't finished it yet, but it's, uh, apologizing to liberals or admitting you're wrong to liberals is the, um, conservatives room 101 from 1984, from 1984. It is yeah. the most horrible thing. It is, it is a cage full of rats, uh, threatening to, to gnaw their eyes out. It is the most horrible thing they could imagine. They would rather die than ever do that because they've already had to do it twice yeah. in their lifetime. They've already had to sort of find a way out of the George Bush corner. George Bush is the greatest president in history corner into which they painted themselves over the objections of liberals. And they had to find a way to weasel and lie and burn their uniform and otherwise slither away from that catastrophe. And they slithered into a bunch of funny hats and called themselves the Tea Party, and the media let them get away with it. Now they're right back in the same hole, having voted. Think about this. These people have voted for the two worst presidents in history back mm -hmm. to back. Mm -hmm. And they've been proud of it. And they're proud of it right up until it falls apart under them. And that moment feels like it's coming real soon. Yeah. And these people are going to have to uh, bend a knee. Yep. And, and, there, and there is going to be a huge market for excuses and and explanations and camouflage and deflection equipment well, so that they never have to apologize or even admit they've never heard of Donald Trump. Right. And it's going to be, uh, I mean, my prediction is, is may not come true, but my prediction is we're going to have a huge resurgence of NASCAR, country music, yes. uh, barbecue, and uh, going inward. You know, there might even be a religious revival again yeah. of born again Christians. We had that after Nixon, you know, go to church, go to church, go to church. And that was clearly a reaction to the political sphere, not providing us with the uh, self-nourishment that we needed. So they'll go back to church or they'll go to country music and all of us get along. There sure will be a lot of calls for civility and yes, bringing the will. nation together. And yep. why what don't why, can we go back to normal? Let's go back to normalcy. And can we and, have a, can we, could we just have a grand bargain, Blue Gal? Yeah, just put some sort exactly. of grand bargain and that, about and that's grand when, bargain. That's when it becomes a group of people who are terribly, terribly concerned about what's happening to the country under President you know, Harris or Warren or whoever it's going to be. Or Sanders. Um, or Sanders. Or yeah, Biden. You know, or whoever, whoever it's going to be. Or whoever. Buttigieg. Whoever right. it's going to be. Which is why, dear liberals out there, as much as you and I believe Fox is is hell on earth, is, is the incarnation of toxicity, is poisoning everything it touches, because it is, um, it is not worth your emotional energy to go after its brain dead followers right. because they're, they're yeah. never going to wake up. The, the best way to use your time is to focus on that small group of people very high up in the media who are going to be dedicating their lives to deflecting criticism away from Fox and onto both sides. Right. The right. people who are, who are going, who are lining up to help those people get away with it again. If you can break those people on the wheel of history, if you can force them to their knees and make them stop doing that, make them actually behave like journalists, make them report on what happened in this country during the Trump administration the way we reported on what happened in Germany after World War II. Mm -hmm. If you can force them to do that, then the cycle will be broken, or at least it, it will be we'll, we'll be on the road to recovery. But if these people are allowed to get away with it again, because people in the media are too fucking terrified of Nazis egging their houses or too fucking devoted to their bottom line, to mm -hmm. call, uh, to insult a third of their audience by pointing out that a third of their audience are good Germans who are responsible for this, then we're going to go through this whole thing again yep. with President Tom Cotton. Well, and Mark it's a, my it's words. The, it's the work of a lifetime because we, it is. I saw yesterday, this is Friday, I saw mm -hmm. yesterday Chuck Todd 
um, as broken and grave oh, yeah. and, you know, th- this is a national nightmare. He opens his show with this is a national nightmare. And then what happens 19 minutes later? He's yeah. got Daniel Pletka on his panel talking about, well, you know, maybe there is something to this Biden thing and we should investigate everybody and make sure we've yeah. got all the facts. And there was no big hook that came out and just dragged her off stage. No, there wasn't. Sam Man Sims didn't one come of along the and her off. One of the panelists, bless his heart, did say, no, it's been completely debunked. And do you really want to go there with conflicts of interest with Jarvanka? No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. No, it hasn't. I mean, and then we're, oh, you know, we're going to pause on that, says Chuck Todd, and go to commercial. Right. That's right. his answer. And this because is the guy is... who couldn't breathe 19 minutes earlier because of the dangers to our republic. Well. Don't have Daniel Pletka on if you really care about our republic. Well, that he's the guy with his subdermal implant from Comcast <laughs> in his skull yeah. that warns him you are getting damn close to having an opinion about this right, stuff. Right, right. And right. you mu- and, and you're about to let your one conservative asshole be eaten alive on the air. And you are not going to because that there's there's uh twenty million dollars in dick pills right out the door. Yeah, right out we're the door. Lose that completely. <laughs> and we're not gonna let that happen. So you're damn well gonna cause call a break and yeah. come back and do something else. Well, and, and, that is and, how and if you look at operates. the advertising on MSNBC and NBC yeah. for these news programs, it is eighty five percent pharmaceutical companies and they do yeah. not want to talk about Medicare for all. No. So yes, this is a battle <laughs> at a very granular level for mm-hmm. the attention span of Chuck Todd. Well, and, um, and we were talking about therapy. Yeah, the we, therapy well, let's, and... let's say hi to Jeff. Yeah. Jeff, yeah. we had coffee with Jeff this week, and Jeff is one of our listeners, came into town, bought us mm-hmm. a cup of coffee. We really mm-hmm. appreciate Jeff and are glad to meet him. But I thought it was funny because I was expecting, as as happens with many podcast listeners who come and talk to us, mm-hmm. that we would be talking politics and we would be talking, you know, podcasting and so forth. Uh, mm-hmm. And that he would have heard all of our stories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Jeff is a sci-fi nerd. He is. Boy. <laughs> then, boy. Well, you, you, you had a wonderful time oh, for, uh, talking to him. It was mm-hmm. heavenly watching the two yes. of you talk about what? Dune and talk about... Uh, oh, you you just talked about everything. I got out my knitting. <laughs> he, he talked about all the stuff I haven't read yet. I'm like, yeah, oh, man, well, that's true. So a lot of the Dune yeah. books. But... Yeah. And he's read all of them, which is re- yeah. really remarkable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you guys had a fantastic conversation. I haven't we read did. Dune one yet, so I'm I'm way behind. I but, don't even uh, know you anymore. Yeah, I know. I, I got out my knitting and I <laughs> I knit a row and you know. Well, <laughs> and, but one of the things he said was he's been doing chiropractic work for many, 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 many yeah, years. decades, yeah, and that it has it in his experience it's gotten harder, right, on the human body, just um, being in this environment in this, the, in the energy level of this and that th- this environment requires puts a, a physical wall around people and it's just yeah. harder to uh reach that sort of core of peace so to speak mm-hmm. that's that we want people to have inner peace but there's this energy field or what whatever you want to call it that's really toxic out it's there. It's despairing and exhausting yeah. and anger. And part of it is, part of it really is, and, and uh, I think we probably contribute to a little bit, although I'm hoping we contribute in the sense that here's a vocabulary to help you understand what you're going through. Mm-hmm. It's not this mm-hmm. wild, chaotic mystery. Right. What you're, what you're going through right now is understandable. There is an end point to it. There mm-hmm. are things you can do about it. Right. And one of the things you can do about it is, as we told Jeff, go get drunk on art. Right. Right. Go to an art museum. Go relax. Go listen to symphony music. Go listen to rock and roll music. Go read a beautiful book that has nothing to do with politics. Um, have a perfect phone call, Blue Gal. That's not Macbeth. No, no. <laughs> don't read, don't Macbeth read Macbeth if you want to yeah. read beautiful art that has nothing yeah. to do with politics. Don't, don't read Handmaid's Tale. Don't read yeah. Parable of the Sower. There's a whole bunch of things <laughs> not to read. I, I have a whole list of don't read these while you're depressed and Trump is president. Right. But there, but do get your head out of this because. It takes a physical and emotional toll just to be slogging through this, especially when this is the thing that generally speaking drives me nuts. When you can see what the problem is and you can see that the problem is not a meteor heading toward it. The problem is entirely made by human beings and the problem is entirely fixable by human beings. Donald Trump is a person who occupies an office 
and there is a mechanism for removing him from that office. And he's right. clearly guilty and he's clearly a traitor and he clearly shouldn't be in that office. There are mechanisms and, and institutions in place designed specifically to take care of this problem. The maddening part is the people who, who sit in those institutions won't do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They won't. And, and uh, the House is now, uh, Nancy Pelosi has finally been convinced by, it all it took was Donald Trump confessing on national television that he's a traitor <laughs> and he plans to do it again. And, yeah. and then doubling down the next day uh, to convince her, yeah, okay, got to do it. But the maddening part, this, this happens at our town level. At our state level, the county level, when you see things that are fucked up mm-hmm. institutionally and you know they can be fixed, and in some cases, you know you could fix them and no one will take steps and no one will put the right people in charge and no one will take leadership on it. And everyone just shrugs their shoulders and says, well, you know, that's just politics. That's mm-hmm. just office holding. That's just that's just Washington. That's not true. Yeah. There's Our government is our people we elected. So the reason that there is someone standing on the throat of the proper action refusing to let it go is because the voters of Kentucky keep electing Mitch McConnell to the Senate. Right. The people of Kentucky are responsible. The the Republican voters of Kentucky are responsible for this. The Republican voters of Montana are responsible for this. If you want to get mad at somebody, get mad at the 30 to 40 million meatheads who keep doing this to us Mm -hmm. and never fucking learn. And what you should take away from that is what I've already mentioned is you're never going to fix these people. You're never going to reach them. They're never going to come around, but you can go after the people that enable them. Right. And, and even Republicans, however, even now Republicans are saying among themselves, you never go full Kevin McCarthy. You just (laughs) never, ever go full Kevin McCarthy. (laughs) That was such a disastrous thing. I mean, just God, just staring into the camera going, uh, you inserted a word there. uh Uh, No, uh that's literally what it says. And just that kind of like, Oh, he's oh my dumb. god he's, yeah, he's dumb. dumb he's a big dumb dumb guy yep. and he's the house minority leader mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. the republican party is is really is just that stupid just that bone stick stone stupid and they're racist and they're authoritarian and they're going to go down with the ship if it kills them and it kills the rest of us which is why um it is my theory that history is bunk um, there's yes. a there was a flurry of articles in this in this last week from Peter Weiner, former Republican, probably current Republican, who for some reason you know is a George Bush speechwriter, and one of the many 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 people who should absolutely never have a job anywhere in media and does because that's how we do things now. Um, Jeff Flake wrote a column that was similar to it. There were a few others, all of which said the same thing, which was you know. It's really, really time for Republicans to come to Jesus and get get right and straighten up and fly right. Or history, history may judge them very harshly. Yeah, history's going to judge. History's going to judge everyone. Right. And and yeah, history, history has a lot better things to do than to sit around waiting for the Republicans to sober up and, and fly right. And and more importantly, the Republican Party may be damaged irreparably or for a long time. And my answer to that is that's just bullshit. Yeah. Not that it, it's bullshit. Anyone who lived through the Bush administration, who saw exactly these same people do exactly the same terrible things, make exactly the same terrible choices, and just say, fuck it, there are no consequences. We're never going to lose. We're going to win forever. So we can say whatever we want now. We can do whatever we want. Yeah, it's permanent Republican majority. <clears throat> Don't you yeah. understand? Yeah. And who who were completely unashamed to use 9-11 Right. And the and post 9-11 as a liberal free fire zone. You just dump on everything they hated about us and and just slap us and slander us and promote their careers and climb the career ladder and get away with murder. And the minute it all fell apart, they all scurried into the into the floorboards and they all put on their funny hats and they all came out as tea partiers and suddenly no, nothing, none of that had ever happened. History will not hold any of these people accountable for anything. Well, and we it reminds will. me of what was said in Sunday school last week, adult uh-huh. Sunday school that we attended yes. about the the Americans hate history but yes. love nostalgia and you yes. pointed out to me later yeah that the reason people hate history the reason Americans hate history is because they love nostalgia because they there's love a it. That's right. direct connection of nostalgia is reinventing history because you hate it you right. hate what you were and what your people did in the past and so you create a past where everything was wonderful and you're the hero and that's nostalgia 
Mm -hmm. And the Republican Party is incredibly nostalgic for a time when white men ran everything and America's number one in manufacturing and forgetting completely what the 1950s were actually like. And it's really important. I think what you're saying about history is really important that forgetting the past is the key to Republican politics and Republican success. Yeah. And and helping them again. I'm repeating this for the fifth time now. Right. (laughs) These people will never change. Republicans at voters and elected officials, all I've said this before, some sometime somewhere there for them, there is no past or future. They exist in a permanent eternal now. Mm-hmm. And and now always happens, and and whatever they said yesterday doesn't count. Whatever's going to happen tomorrow, that's tomorrow. And they just don't have any cognitive sense of, um, uh, as I said before, also object permanence. Mm-hmm. They just don't acknowledge that George Bush was ever president, or that they ever supported him, or he did anything wrong. It just isn't comprehensible to them because they only talk to each other. That anyone would ever even bring that up because that's so irrelevant to what's happening right now, this minute, which is liberals trying to crucify this good Christian man. Who's our president. Mm. (laughs) And it is, it is precisely because they don't care about any of that, that they keep doing shit like this. Mm -hmm, And, mm -hmm. and, but the, (laughs) there's this moment where they need an escape hatch. There's a moment when it always runs out. Um, they, they're finally, they're the equivalent of junkies who are now selling their, you know, toaster ovens and TVs to pay for their habit. They're, they're breaking right. the country down and selling it off to keep the, the high going. And eventually they hit bottom. And what happens when you hit bottom is, is in this case, you need to fucking suffer. You mm-hmm. need to be dragged mm-hmm. out in public and have a bi- a billion candle watt light shown on your face. And the world needs to see you did this. This is your fault. This is not both sides. This is not everybody. This is not government. This is not human nature. You personally and specifically voted this lunatic into office and supported him every inch of the way. And we are not going to let you scuttle away and pretend it didn't happen or pretend everybody's to blame for it ever again. You are going to pay for this. And we're not going to hurt you. We're not going to lock you up, but we're going to make sure everyone knows your name. Everyone knows the name of your business and everyone knows why they should shun you as a citizen until you have fucking redeemed yourself. That's what we're going to do this time. And until that happens, the people whose job it is, the media personalities whose job it is to let these people off the hook so they continue being paying customers will go right on doing it. Mm -hmm. So you have to stop the problem. You can't stop it at its source. The source is Fox News and Fox News is is eternal. It'll just, you know, dwindle and dwindle as their as their um, viewing audience average age approaches between 92 and dead. Mm -hmm. Fox News will eventually just just wither away. But the people who who know better, the people who are in the mainstream media and goddamn well know better and do it anyway. Those are the people to whom you should direct your fury. And I think it's effective. I mean, all we need, again, is a national constitutional crisis happening in real time on television to make Chuck Todd stop yeah. <laughs> and stare and look like he's going to sh- breathing. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm afraid now. I'm afraid. It was never supposed to happen. No, what was never supposed to happen is you were never supposed to be around for this when it fell apart. Right. Right. You were supposed to get away with this. This was supposed to be something that we could laugh off. Isn't it a weird little episode? And now it's gone. Uh, but that didn't happen. And this is and this 19 bring- minutes later, you had Danielle Pletka on your show. I right. want to get back to that over and over again. Oh, yeah. this, this moment when Chuck Todd is incredibly grave, but he still has liars on his show and says, and then lets them lie and then says, let's go to commercial. That's mm-hmm. unforgivable. That is conscious and unforgivable. Well, and if I, I, I think I need use the analogy when we were talking about the Einstein thought experiment. Um, the man standing on a, a railroad tr- uh, flatbed bouncing a ball. Mm-hmm. Up and down, mm-hmm. up and down. That's what the media is doing. The media is mm-hmm. doing exactly the same thing over and over again. Both sides, both sides, up and down, up and down, left, right, left, right. Everyone's to blame. That's their game. That's what they do. And if we were, a, if they were stationary in roughly the middle of a healthy democracy where there were some good, bad people on one side, good, bad people on the other, and it was a, a, a healthy constitutional democracy where people were compromised, that would be adequate. But they're actually on a moving train car that's that's rocketing towards the right faster than they even realize. So, but from their perspective, they're just doing the same thing they always do: up, down, up, down, both sides, left, right. But from our perspective, this is where being outsiders is terribly important. 
from the outside perspective, from us looking on from a distance, we can see that this is not a ball going up and down. It's an arc mm-hmm. moving further and further and further to the right. And we can see what's coming. The whole train is moving to the right. The yes. whole thing. And, they, and either they don't notice it or they don't care. But the, But we can never understand each other because from their perspective, all they're doing is what they're paid to do. Mm-hmm. All Chuck Todd is doing is what Phil Griffin pays him to do. All David Brooks is doing every day of his life is what the Schulzberger family pays him to do. And it is he is unable to comprehend why that is a bad thing because every week there's a there's money in his account. Yeah, he gets so a paycheck. I, I right. must be doing the right thing. And we on the outside have watched how tragically this this train has gone off the rails and how far it's gone. This has been going on for decades. We've been shouting about this for decades. And we've been ignored for decades, which brings me to analogy number two, if you'll bear with me. I am bearing with you, honey. <laughs> it's the check engine light. Yes. Um, the media's check engine light has been flashing for decades. And it's been getting noticeably worse for decades. The, the car is shuddering, it's banging, and it's belching smoke. And the media always maintains there's nothing wrong. Um, we liberals have said, oh, hell yes, there's something wrong. There's something wrong, something drastically wrong. You really should fix the engine. And they never have, and they've ignored us for years. And now the engine is cracked and the car is on fire and the media is saying, holy shit, my God, there's an actual problem. My first reaction is great. That's great. Now we'll get to fix it. Except who do they call to look into the problem? They call the same goddamn people who've been telling them for years there is no problem. That's the problem. The people who are in the media now are the problem. Mm -hmm. If you really wanted to fix what's wrong with this country, you don't get someone who's been writing attack ads for 20 years to come in and tell Democrats how to run their business. Right. You get someone who's been telling you running attack ads for 20 years is a terrible, terrible thing, and it's wrecking America. That's the person you get because that's the person who's been right all along. But the media can't do that. So the media keeps turning to the same people who caused the problem to fix the problem, which means the problem is never going to change. Mm-hmm. And it really does take the engine of the democracy to crack and the car to catch on fire for things to get so bad that they start looking beyond their little circle of friends in panic. Like, we don't know what happened. <laughs> we don't know what's going on. Um, is anyone out there? Can someone fix this? Because we don't know how this got broken. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the answer I'm going to give them is the same answer I would have given them 10 years ago or 20 years ago, which is step out of the way because you are the problem. I want to uh, add to that. And with a hope that everyone's email inboxes are breathing a sigh of relief now Uh because the end of the fundraising quarter for Democratic (laughs) candidates is over now. Yeah, it's got pretty bad. It got awful. And uh you know, you give five bucks when you can to the candidates that you think are worthy of your of your hard earned money, uh, and we want to thank you for donating to our podcast and to my <laughs> my legal defense fund. Mm-hmm. Don't forget about my legal defense fund, which is going to medical bills. Oh, and- still, we are not we have not no. reached the medical bill threshold yet. Uh, but these fundraising numbers that are coming out, and I find it fascinating that cable news is fixated on Joe Biden didn't raise enough and Bernie Sanders raised a lot. And Elizabeth Warren just did a huge ad buy for January. And Donald Trump just did a big ad buy in certain swing states and so on and so forth. Where's that money going? It's going to the affiliates of these cable news networks. It's going directly to Comcast Mm -hmm. in one way or another. And so following the money is really important. The validity of the candidate is who is who can raise the most, and that is because that money then gets turned into revenue for these networks. Right. So uh, follow the money. Well, and <laughs> really, that's one of the reasons that this system is so broken. Yeah. Well, they're using uh, a barometer to read radiation. I mean, they're using right. they're, they're using right. the right. wrong measure right. to measure anything because money, yeah. money, and horse races is all they understand. That's all they know how yeah. to do, and that's all they've been trained to do, and they've been paid really, really well to do it for years and years and years. And mm-hmm. suddenly, mm-hmm. the people who are on the thick glass on the outside who've been pounding say, no, you have to stop doing that. You have to stop. No, you don't understand. The horse is lame. Yeah. The horse is lame. Everybody's betting on that horse, mm-hmm. but we know that horse is lame. And, oh, no, 
I got all this money because yeah. so many people bet on this horse. I've got all this money here. Well, and, and we, we'd like to, yeah. we'd like, and, and th that's the problem because they don't know how to do anything except frame it in that way. And we're asking right, them to frame right. the news in a completely different way that one side is mm -hmm. actually wrong and mm -hmm. should not be given a microphone. And one side is right and should be given a microphone. The one side is simple. One side, you have to report that today the president told 72 lies. And here's some of the lies he told. That is how the news needs to be reported now. You might yeah. not like it, yeah. but that's the way it is. Yeah. And and unfortunately, there there are people still dug in like ticks at the top floors of the of the mainstream media who won't do that, who can't do yeah. that. And it's funny because the media critics and former it, it is just like the Republican Party in that once you're out of the game or out of the mainstream or out of the limelight, you get real good at critiquing the industry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, nobody... all of a sudden you come to Jesus, you realize, oh, no, this is really biased. Yeah. Going 50-50 is really a problem yeah. when someone is flat out wrong yeah. and giving them half the field. That doesn't actually lead to a cogent discussion of the issue. Yeah. Uh, Drift Class, I wanted to uh, thank you for catching me up short this week. What did I do? Uh, I we were talking about impeachment and what and the chances of uh, the Senate removing Donald Trump from office, yes. which we recognize are slim to none. Yes. Oh yeah. I pointed out to you, trying to be hopeful, uh -huh. that you know, the, on the other hand, Mitch McConnell talks to Rupert Murdoch mm -hmm. and Charles Koch. Charles Koch really hates those tariffs. Rupert Murdoch understands which way the wind is blowing uh -huh. and that this is going to be bad and it is going to cost them to rebrand the Republican Party yeah. again and they may not be able to do it. Uh, and and you got mad. <laughs> I was I thought I was being hopeful you about were, it. And, and you, you were you're quite right about it. I, I agree. You know, and 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 my analysis is correct. However, mm -hmm. you pointed out. At that point, if the reason Mitch McConnell decides to remove Donald Trump from office is because what Rupert Murdoch and Charles Koch told him to, mm -hmm. then we really are nothing but an oligarch. Yes, that's all we are. And we really need to be aware of that. Yes. Uh, now, we've always been a representative democracy. And yes, our representatives have a louder voice than an average citizen because they are representing us mm -hmm. in Congress. But uh, Rupert Murdoch and Charles Koch are just two individual constituents. But because of Citizens United and money in politics, their voices count more. And that's got to change. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, Trudy in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Trudy sent us a letter and she also sent us T-shirts. Yes. And, and two of the T-shirts were extra special. Yes. In a very specific yes. uh, length yes. way. I went, I went, oh, there's nothing here for me. I was like Charlie Brown. I was like Charlie Brown at Halloween. Yeah. I got a rock. There's nothing there for me. I got a rock. I got nothing. <laughs> there's never <gasps> any shirts oh long enough God. for Drift Class. It's, it's tall. And it's tall. Trudy was able to send us XLT oh. t-shirts that cover your belly. They don't look like one of those crop no. tops on the beach. No. Right. As good as um, I look in those, Trudy Blue Gal. As good as I look in those. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> those aren't for public consumption. No, no, that's, trust just, that, me. that's 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 uh, <laughs> professional left after dark stuff. The cats don't want to no, look no, at you. No. Put that away. <laughs> just put that away. Uh, the uh, Trudy owns a business called Sisters in Ink. Sisters, I N I N K dot com. Mm -hmm. And uh, makes t shirts. And these t shirts, she sent one for the girls and she sent. Two for you, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Although I can wear the long yeah. one also as a tunic. Sure. Um, and they say, uh, make lying wrong again. Mm -hmm. And it's such a lovely uh, sentiment. Perfect, because simple, clear. No one's going to walk up to you, as she pointed out in her letter. No one's going to walk up to you and go, no, lying has to mm -hmm. be right. It's okay, because Donald Trump does it, so it's okay. And so she wrote in her letter and said, the t-shirts are actually my husband's idea. He started listening to your podcast this year. And while he is not as politically intense as I am, mm -hmm. political intensity, what's mm -hmm. that? Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. He very much enjoys the show and thought you might enjoy wearing the shirts. 
I'd send you tots and pears, but that's not my thing. So I will just say, we hope you make it out the other end of the nightmare stronger and wiser. I hope the same for myself. I can't commit to a monthly contribution, but will send small amounts along as they become available. Mm -hmm. That is perfectly fine. Uh, we appreciate all of your support, and we love the T-shirts. So and we want to make we will be I will be wearing those around town. I swear those we are great. Make clear that Sisters in Ink is not a sponsor of this show. That's Cause, right, because we only do fake. We sponsors. only do fake sponsors, and Sisters in Ink is real, as real as can be. They are a real business. Mm -hmm. Sistersinink.com. Mm -hmm. Go visit them, and uh, we must say one of our fake sponsors uh, were the Good Lord yeah. Split. Oh God. Um, don't they have a promo code now of Rick yeah. Perry? Uh, Rick Perry's this week. <laughs> Dancing with the yeah. stars, past and future are, will be. They uh... are. They've laid on. I think they have opened a second and third factory for sheet cake in the greater <laughs> uh, Maryland, Baltimore area. Because wow. I just have a feeling there's, a, as we said last week, there's a whole bunch of ships deserting the sinking rat. And they're, I think it's going to be the yeah. case. So yeah. you're, there's yeah. going to be a lot yeah. of going away parties. I mean, we're losing ambassadors right and left. We're losing special mm -hmm, advisors mm -hmm. right and left. Uh, Rick Perry again, and who apparently, much to my surprise, is quitting the uh, cabinet as the smart one. Um, the smart yeah, one. I, the first and the smart one. I yes, did not have Rick yes. Perry smart guy in my bingo card, so I lose that. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Charlie Pierce had a bingo this week uh, with Soros. And, uh, oh, wow. Because you know, yeah. it was a, a long Trump a Giuliani a rant that he's George Soros Soros and he said bingo got it now, see my problem is I had Alinsky and they haven't gotten around oh, to Alinsky yeah, yet so yeah you know I was one off man so close so very very close so close mm -hmm. uh we crushed it again at trivia this week we did. I gotta say I gotta say yeah. we did pretty well free beer mm -hmm. <laughs> free beer is good free beer gift certificate and we can't figure out if we're going to invade Iran or not. No, I, I don't. I've lost track of whether or not we do that. I know that North Korea now has ballistic uh, missiles that can fire from submarines, which, you know, wasn't going to happen under President Stupid because mm -hmm. he knows how to make a deal. Uh, but I'm, I'm I'm very unclear as to whether have we invaded Iran or are we, have we already won? Is the war over? Should we be celebrating? Because that was really, really important just like 12 days ago. And now we're just like, well, you know, uh, stuff happens and things things go wrong, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one thing I can guarantee you is I can guarantee you two things, Blue Gal. Three things. How about yeah. three things? One is the Trump disaster will eventually be over one yep. way or another. Number two, the conservative monster machine that created him will still be running strong long after he's gone. And number three. They will definitely be coming after our Medicare. They will absolutely, yep. definitely, positively be coming for Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Don't doubt it for a minute because these we people- We saw that yesterday with Donald Trump's visit to the villages where he celebrated his executive order strengthening uh, Medicare Advantage, which is a backdoor privatization of Medicare, yeah. okay? Yeah. Just so you know, uh, Medicare Advantage has swiped money from Medicare and is- a, a backdoor privatization. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. We've got to get Republicans out of the health care policy debate. That if you they don't to belong. rescue they can't be there. Medicare. They cannot yeah. they're they not they should not be, be allowed to part of this conversation. No. no. And I just no. want to pin this moment in history just for future generations who are again studying us very closely. Hello, future generations. Hope we did okay. Sorry about all the mess. Um just a week ago. This is how fast things are moving. Just a week ago, Donald Trump was denying everything. He'd done nothing wrong. Yeah. Whistleblower was a spy who be, should, be, uh, should be tried for treason. Adam Schiff is a liar who should resign and be tried for treason. A week later, just a week mm -hmm. later, same guy, sort on the White House lawn, admitted to everything. Everything. And then he figured, fuck it, as long as I'm running a tab, you know what? Let's add China to the list. Yeah. China. Yeah. China, you should yeah. help me out here too. Yeah. Why don't you get on board with investigating the Biden stuff? And just sort of walked away because, you know yeah. what, I get to do stuff like that because I'm the king and the king gets to do whatever the king wants. And it's up to you and I and Nancy Pelosi, frankly, to um, teach him that he is not king, that he is a citizen. There's something in his rhetoric lately, too, that really is a tell as to how nervous he is. Yeah. Where he is constantly saying in front of reporters, as you all know, you all know, you all know everyone this. knows, yeah. everybody knows this. I know, you know, everyone knows. And when he does that, that is such a tell that he is rehearsing an excuse with backup. Yeah. 
that everybody knows this is true. Well, and so and he, you can't contradict me in any way. And today right? he said 17 times in, in a four minute period, I was investigated by Obama. Obama investigated me, investigated. I was investigated. And this works because on a third of the country, because a third of the country are brainwashed meatheads who believe yeah. anything he says. And if he repeats it two or three or four times, it becomes true to them. And then when he and repeats the, the opposite. Is he did, he did <clears throat> rent apartments to Russian oligarchs who were doing nefarious things in Trump Tower. Yes. And they were being, those Russians were being investigated. And all of a sudden, the uh, listening devices that the investigators were using to in, to investigate those Russian foreign nationals committing crimes in Trump Tower mm -hmm. caught Donald Trump committing a crime. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. And, and, that's, and they turned it over to the other authorities. And that's, Can we talk about channels here? And that's the only problem <laughs> I have with the approach that, you know, yeah. one one perfect, beautiful, powerful impeachment charge to get this guy out of office. Yeah. The problem with that is you are leaving all the other crimes uninvestigated and unpunished. Right, right. Um, right. And, and someone has to crack this open and go through it. And it can't be 10 years from now or 20 years from now, some historian going through the archives going, holy crap, really? Really? He did all this? No. All of this has to come out in the public at, at roughly the same mm -hmm. time. Because that's what... That's and, what... and don't sleep on Mnuchin no. and Mnuchin poss allegedly holding up a audit of the vice president's taxes and going to the IRS and saying, no, 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 don't do that. But what, what made Watergate epic, other than the crimes and the repeated crimes and on and on and on, was the fact that it was a door into just how paranoid and lawless the entire Nixon administration was. How right. every right. department, every every cabinet member, the attorney general, all of them were, were just a bunch of fucking crooks. And they were all working for a lunatic who was paranoid and wanted to destroy his political opponents. And the the complete the, and how far back the conspiracy went. How how deep mm -hmm. and how how crazy these people have been for a long, long time. And until that is part of history, it's just going to be, you know, you're going to get a bunch of Republicans saying basically it was a third rate burglary. It was a third rate digital burglary. And that's all that it ever was. And it was a bunch of Democrats who hated him and so on and so forth. Lastly, if I may, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not going to talk a lot about this because I've already written a lot about this. But last week, we asked our listeners who won the shit take of the week because there was a lot of competition, a lot <laughs> of competition for it. This week, there was a lot of competition for it, but the undisputed champion of shit takes this week was David Brooks from the New York Times. Yes, it was. Who wrote what Charlie Pierce of Esquire, a legitimate person and blue check individual who also send occasionally links to us and likes us and corresponds with me on Twitter and an email. And with like, you, yes. He treats yes, me like he a does. person. Oh, daddy, I feel so validated. <laughs> um, uh, who Charlie Pierce uh, characterized as, quote, the worst piece ever published in the New York Times. I would not debate Charlie Pierce's oh, wisdom no. at this oh, moment. Oh, no. Don't, it was, don't. Yeah. It was astonishingly bad. And the only he thing I He invented a person to talk to. He invented two whole people to talk to. <laughs> and they hadn't talked to each other. This was this was stupid Rosencrantz and Gildester. This is, <laughs> you know, this is just, just make shit up. And, it, and both of them sounded like David Brooks. Yes, of course. And it really was him playing with his Barbies. And now you yeah. say, I believe in civility. And you say, oh, you like civility, but you hate me. Call me racist. Ur, ur, bad, ur. And it was, it was the most childish, ridiculous, laziest, shittiest column I've read about David Brooks in a long time. And the only thing I could lend to it, uh, because he he was top trending on Twitter yesterday. That's yeah. how bad it was. On a day when Donald Trump committed treason on television live. David Brooks was he trending. He was beaten yes. by David Brooks, yeah. Yeah. Who, who had the shittiest take of all shit takes anyway, is remind people David Brooks has been has been writing bilge like this for the Schulzberger family for 16 years. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's never gotten any better. And he's never gotten any better. And this is never going to improve. And there's something about his writing that they must love. This must be porn to them. Yeah, they must yeah. be just stroking it on the fifth floor of the New York Times building. Going, What's he right now, man? Oh, this is so good because there's no other rational explanation for why they keep this talentless, myopic douchebag on on staff. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I could lend to this discussion was to take my readers by the hand all the way back to David Brooks's weekly standard days mm -hmm. and introduce mm -hmm. them to to Joey Tabula Rasa. <laughs> <laughs> who was a Republican, Ooh. an independent-minded guy, but he who David Brooks invented out of nowhere yeah. to support George W. Bush's Iraqi war. See? 
And he filled Joey Tabula Rasa's mouth with all of these thoughts about the crazy marchers and the 60s and how the hippies didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. And he doesn't know a lot, but he knows that he loves America. And our military is great. And George Bush is a smart guy. And it's, it's the single cheapest, laziest form of journalism you can have. And it's really – and if you track David Brooks's work over time, that's literally all he does. Yeah. He yeah. invents people that he's talked to behind the scenes. He just got things. he got really blatantly lazy about doing it and actually yeah. invented a person in writing. He said, I'm doing this. It was yes. like it was I'm very inventing... Trumpian in that he oh, just yeah. sort of stood up and said, OK, now I'm going to invent a person, you know, yeah. and he he sort of stealthed on that for 30 years. But and, and what yeah. he what he trades on is his secret backs backroom insider knowledge of talking to real p- power brokers and wheelers and dealers yeah. behind closed on, doors on the Acela corridor train. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and he talked to politicians. He knows these people. He knows them very well. And they've, 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 they, they confide in him. The problem is everything they tell him turns out to be David Brooks is wrong again. <laughs> everything, everything, he, everything he writes about the Republican party turning the corner and the Republican yeah, party Renaissance right, and right. we cleaned our, cleaned our brand. And don't worry. It's going to be Rubio. Everything right. he writes turns out to be wrong. Yep. And again, I, at the end of the day, I scratch my head and going, what service is he providing for the Schulzberger family mm-hmm. that is not on the printed page? Because right. what I'm looking at here in front of me should get you fired from from the State Journal Register. Right. It should get I you mean, fired it's, it's, from the church newsletter. Yeah. It's the really, whole fucking really. – and it's always As this As a volunteer, so, right? <laughs> so I would urge you just to go to my blog and read Peak David Brooks because I couldn't come up with a better title because Peak I was – Peak David Brooks is, is what it was. I and, was you know, I was thinking about – uh, 12 days ago, four, almost 14 days ago, mm-hmm. when news of this letter and news of this phone call came out yes. initially, and Twitter exploded with, that's it. He must be impeached. That yeah. This is it. Enough. And I tweeted at that time, yeah, this is now a Pelosi problem. This isn't this isn't a media problem. This isn't a voter problem. This is a Pelosi problem that she's holding this up. Right. And I got a lot of pushback from Pelosi fans. And and granted, you know, there's a lot of Pelosi fans out there. I get it. I'm a Pelosi fan. You know, but but I kept saying to people, look, the reason that we all wanted her elected as speaker again was she has her caucus and they will do what she, what she leads them to do. Right. So why is she holding this up? Well, she didn't hold it up. She and, you know, <laughs> about 31 Congress critters. Uh, caught up with all of us on Twitter by mm-hmm. Tuesday, yep. right? I mean, it, it happened very, very quickly. It did. Um, and so I, I want to kind of circle back around to what I said at the beginning about, you know, not today, Satan, and right. fuck that noise. Right. This is the Republican Party's problem. It is. Donald Trump, yes, all of us are suffering under Donald Trump's reign. And, and I get it that there are policies that he is pushing that are incredibly hurtful and harmful. Right. And we are fighting those in court and resisting and persisting against those things. Well, we are marching and we are knocking doors for candidates. And you sent out uh, postcards for postcards candidates for a Texas state house candidate, Eliz, Eliz, E L I Z, Mm -hmm. uh, Moskowitz, uh, Eliz for Texas dot com, TX, uh, Eliz for TX dot com. Uh, I sent 10 postcards out this week and I'll do more. Um, so we're doing all of those things, but in the, the problem of Donald Trump being in office and committing crimes on television Mm -hmm. is a Republican party problem. And so don't take that on within your psyche that this is somehow your burden to carry as a liberal. It isn't. This is Mitch McConnell's problem. Uh, and he doesn't look good, by the way. He no. was on television on uh, CNBC this week, and he looks ill. I mean, people were telling me, oh, he always looks that way. No, he looks ill. He looks worse than he mm-hmm. has looked in a long time. So, uh, and and of course, Trump has his wife in the cabinet, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> hostage. So uh, Trump is very good at hiring wives of uh, Republican talkers and, and leaders, uh, and hiring family members. There's all kinds of oh yeah, Bill Barr's son-in-law is in the White House. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of ways that he makes sure that his friends are taken care of. Right. Right. And, your loyalty, uh, right. and if, your you're loyalty. Not, if you're not loyal, right. 
something might happen. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but this is not the problem of Donald Trump is Mitch McConnell's problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and I framing it that way has been helpful to me this week as I sort of get, avoid getting caught up in the noise. Fuck that noise. And what I hear, what, what I hear uh, very recently Republican pundits wringing their hands on on social media, which I I feel for him. I'm wringing my hands. My hands are all wringing out. I've been wringing my hands for 30 years. I'm, I'm down to the bone now. Um, my response to them is your people, baby, your people, your, so people. your people, these are your <laughs> people. You have known these people your entire life. You've, you've treated with them. You traded with them. You've been friends with them. You helped them get elected. This is entirely your fault. This is on yep. you. You want to, you want to help us out? Tell us where the bodies are buried. Mm -hmm. Give us some mm -hmm. actionable intelligence against your former friends that we can use not to wring our hands and say, isn't this terrible? And look at my new friend over here who wrote a book about what a shithead Donald Trump is. No, tell us where the mistresses are. Tell us who the addicts are. Tell us which ones are drunk. Tell us which ones are kleptomaniacs. Tell us which ones have a uh, horrible, sordid history. Bring us photographs because that's how this game works now. Gloves mm -hmm. are off mm -hmm. now. These are not your friends anymore. And if you're still pretending that you can be friends with somebody who helped create this monster machine and then jumped off the minute it caught fire and wants to say, nothing to do with me, then you can't be friends with me. You mean like Rodney Davis? Yeah. Oh, God. Our Congressman Rodney Davis. Uh, I want to thank the State Journal Register for remembering the past. Yeah, they did. Bless their hearts. They remembered that Rodney Davis at the time of the Access Hollywood tape wanted Donald Trump off the ticket and let Mike Pence run for president because mm -hmm. this was just too horrible to even consider that this person was qualified to hold the office of president. And then he fell right in line. Yes, he did. And I, he was on a ra the radio this week he and was. asked what he thought about Donald Trump's behavior. And ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da yeah, ba we'll, we'll include a link. It's a Jim Leach, <laughs> local radio guy. I, I know Jim. I've seen him many times. He He's a public figure. He does a lot of trivia nights. He does a lot of, uh, he covers um uh civic events and he was interviewing as we call him inert carbon rodney mm -hmm. and asked him straight up what he thought about donald trump's and donald trump's behavior and as he said if you can find anything resembling an answer um my quote now in that fire hose of gibberish he puked out you are a better person than me because yeah. rodney davis yeah. is now living under his desk yeah uh, as as yep. most of these people are they do not this is what happened to um why can't i think of her name uh from from iowa hog farmer Iowa. Oh yeah, Johnny Ernst. Johnny Ernst. Yeah, uh, Johnny Ernst, who had you know her town hall, and and some uh, Democrats. And she's showed running up. for statewide office. Yeah, she is. And Democrats yeah. showed up and said, "What do you think?" And she just where's the line? They asked, "Where's the line?" Yeah, right. And, well, we're not going to answer that question now. We're going to we're going to move on. Of course, you're not because you're a coward. Trump's going to say yeah. stuff, and we're not going to talk yeah, about no. it. We're going to just talk about being Iowans I together. Think, you I know? think corruption should be investigated. Whoever, like, oh, did you yeah. and Danielle Plinka share right, that, the, right. the, that three by five inning Let's card? investigate that, everybody, everybody equally. Everybody is <laughs> corrupt and everybody <laughs> should be investigated. Okay, leaving that aside, what do you think about the treason? What about that? You know what? We're not going to talk about that. Next right. question, which right. is actually the, the Iowa nice version of what Donald Trump did this week. Ask the president of Finland a question. Yeah. You're standing right here. Fuck you, you reporting scum. Quit asking yeah. your question. You work for me. Yeah, yeah, right, right. It was essentially you work for me. And he went yeah. berserk. Uh, he, again, he, he can't control himself anymore. So he did. This is, um, I remember when Nixon uh, picked up his press secretary, practically threw him at the media mm -hmm, and said, mm -hmm. you deal with this. And this yeah. it was the same thing, except it was the president of Finland. Donald Trump. What did not want to answer a very persistent, very simple question about what exactly did you ask um, the president of Ukraine, Ukraine for? Yeah. And yeah. he would not answer it. And he got belligerent and he told him to shut up and sit down and ordered him to ask someone else a question. And it was, again, this is a deranged man. This is not pretending. This is not an act. Donald Trump no. is out of his mind. And everyone well, in his party knows he's out of his mind. he's been believing Rudy Giuliani yeah. for a year. Yeah. And that is insane. Yeah. He is crazy Uncle Liberty. And he has Rudy Rudy Kaludi whispering in his ear, this is all true. It's all true. And, you know, Rudy's now going to sue the swamp. So I'm suing the swamp. How do you do that, <laughs> Rudy? It. I'm, I'm going to sue the swamp. The swamp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, there is a new hire, by the way. I just read on Politico and was pointed to this by one of my colleagues at Crooks and Liars. Um, Jesse Lee, who was a comms person for the Obama White House, comms person for 
Nancy Pelosi and also for uh, Center for American Progress is back in Pelosi's office. And that is a signal a lot of people are saying, many peoples. <laughs> no, no, not many peoples. Politico and a couple of people I know are saying, uh, Nancy Pelosi's comms office is about to be very disciplined yeah. in their messaging. Yeah. <laughs> because Obama's, he was in charge of Obama's internet comms. And uh, you might want to follow him on Twitter. It's Jesse, J E S S E. Charles Lee, L E E. Mm -hmm. uh, his tweet that really sums up what has happened and what is impeachable about all of this and what the problem is. Uh, this is what he tweeted This is the thing about the Trump calls. And he's talking about Ukraine. Right. It wasn't a spur of the moment thing, it was right. an escalation of months of pressure from Rudy that had not worked. It hadn't worked with our diplomatic corps and it hadn't worked with the government of Ukraine. It hadn't worked, and Trump decided it was time to bring out the big guns and make clear that the office of the U.S. presidency was at the table. Mm -hmm. That's what happened on that call, and mm -hmm. that's why there were so many people on that call, and that's why the call was whisked away and hidden on a top-secret military server. Yeah. is because all of a sudden, Don is on the call making the ask, and that's right. never supposed to happen. This happened with Australia. Yep. It happened with England. Donald Trump was calling all around the world looking for people to help him dig up dirt on his political opponents. This was this was one part of a massive effort to dirty up, um, to, to get foreign governments to help him cheat mm -hmm. and win another mm -hmm. election. But I do want to mention that this week, Jacob Wall, Ace wing that <laughs> investigating guy attempted to smear Elizabeth Warren as a hot cougar. She's a hot cougar. Who's lusting after? <laughs> she's and you know what her sin is that young red blooded American Marines lust after. Yeah, her. that's a bad thing, my dude. When even Jeff Gannon and James O'Keefe are like embarrassed for mm -hmm. you, maybe it's time to sit the fuck down. I um, want the and Chip and Dale's Marie guys that are dressed up like Marines oh. topless coming to her rallies now and and being the opening act for her rally i want her to lean hard into this yeah and she um, did she said go cougars yeah because she went to a school that had cougars as the mascot and so she with a tremendous amount of shade tweeted yesterday go cougars mm -hmm. <laughs> right back at him well and right. while we were watching impeachment happen in real time mm -hmm. Uh, the White House has eliminated advisory boards for marine life and invasive species, which is a tragedy. But when you think about it, it kind of makes sense considering they are an invasive species. And yeah. finally, thanks to Donald Trump's trade war, the manufacturing sector, about which I know a great deal, is already in a deep recession. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Donald Trump. You and the Dow reacted to that yeah. yesterday and, in a really bad way. And the important yeah. thing that you know about manufacturing jobs is they have an incredibly powerful multiplier effect. If you create a manufacturing mm -hmm. job in the private sector, you create two or three or four more jobs downstream. It's th that's one of the things. That's why you invest in manufacturing, because it creates all these other jobs. Same thing with killing a job. When you kill a job in the manufacturing sector, two or three or four other jobs downstream are going to go away. And that is what Donald Trump's trade war has done to soybean farmers and mm -hmm. to pig farmers and to agricultural generally, generally in the area where I live and to the manufacturing sector, which Barack Obama worked his ass off to rebuild in this country. Yeah. So that's real and, that's and actual real news. I wish that they would report the jobs numbers, yeah. which today were, you know, the lowest in five decades, the unemployment numbers are the lowest since the sixties, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. They really need to report those. Those look at all of the people who have run out of the ability to apply for unemployment. Yes. Yep. And are doing two and three mini jobs to stay alive. And that's that's us. Yeah, that's, like, that's, that's us. Yeah, <laughs> that's us. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it is not. Uh, we're not fully employed in this house. No, and that's we're absolutely that not. is what millions and millions of Americans are dealing with. And we haven't given up, but. After, no. after a decade of on again, yeah. off again, on again, off again, maybe, maybe, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you're yeah. overqualified, underqualified, you're too old. We're not sure what we're looking for. We're looking going in a different direction. I we're get going the in a different direction. Okay. Yeah. Got a lot of that one. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But that's this us. Is, that, that's, that's where the uh, quote unquote unemployment numbers are. And, and, and a lot of people feel that frustration. And to be clear, yeah. we're doing better than millions and millions of people out there. Well, we've we're got, yeah, we've got that. skills and talent and we've got all of you. Mm -hmm. um, and 
if you have a had a payday this week, I've said this many times, if you had a payday this week, we don't get a payday unless you uh, have five bucks to donate to the podcast. Mm-hmm. And there are many, many options on how to do that. Um, all of them fairly easy yeah. uh, <laughs> at uh, proleftpod.com. Thank you for that. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Sunny. Sunny is a patriotic liberal kitty. And of course, Sunny eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your kitty will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Sunny at our Facebook page or website. You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Also, don't forget... If you send us an internet kitty, be sure to put the word kitty in the subject line of your email. Yes. Thank you for that. Very important. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, it's getting chilly here. We All of a sudden, <laughs> it's fall yeah. in central Illinois. It's 50 degrees in the morning. We had the windows open. Uh, if you can afford a hot coffee for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job and a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information, along with Patreon, GoFundMe, and Buy Me a Coffee, all of those are there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass. How are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties demand that you ask the president of Finland a question because he's standing right there. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.